Hey, what's up guys? It's Eli. I'm here at Fit to Fight in Charlotte, North Carolina with uh, my good friend Tariq that came down to visit with Mikkel, who's behind the camera right now. And um, we've been doing some training today and the last thing we were talking about was De La Hiva. And um, some things that, that always come up whenever I'm talking to somebody about De La Hiva, and these were like kind of epiphanies that I had about it whenever I was learning to play. For a long time I played De La Hiva way too lazily. And um, De La Hiva was one of those positions that I realized needs because of the transitional nature of it, it needs to be played a little more aggressively, a little more offensively, because I got to keep the guy busy and active and trying to stabilize the whole time. So I want to keep him feeling like he's just a boat on the ocean and everywhere he steps, he's just off balance and all that stuff. So uh, it's also one of those positions that, that kind of goes along with my attitude about a lot of positions, which is ready, fire, aim. I've got to have something in the chamber right away as soon as I get to the position so I don't mistake the starting block for the finish line. That's a very important thing. Um, so I need to have something right away that as soon as I get to De La Hiva, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to hit this. And if I don't or the energy's not right, I deal with that in the moment, but it's not something that I want to get there and take too long to assess the situation because that's going to put me behind in the timeline and then he's going to be able to pass me and I'm going to leave him sitting there too long. So let's start with some good options and kind of see where it takes us. One of my favorite things to do as soon as I get there is I want to try to get the guy's hands to the mat and so I can start trying to hit submissions. Um, so I'm going to do it like this here. Um, as we get to De La Hiva, and however we got into this position, a lot of the times it might happen that like I started from a hook sweep kind of position here like this and he shoved my leg out of the way. As soon as I possibly can, I wanna get my hand inside the collar. So I'm gonna reach up, I'm gonna grab inside the collar. This is my pushing leg, this is my pulling leg and I need to treat those accordingly and I don't wanna have them just sitting there in place. Right now I'm doing that because I'm talking. But I want this to be very active. I want to be squeezing inside and toward me. I've got my hand here gripping on either the pant or the Achilles tendon. Pant is my preference if we're in the gi. And I'm going to reach up here and I'm going to grab inside the collar like this. So in this jackknife setup kind of push, uh, push pull position, I want to try to drag and pull his face to the floor. Now, he doesn't want his face to hit the floor, so he's going to plant his hands typically like this. And if I can get his leg floating, I know I'm doing a pretty good job. Next thing I'm gonna to look to do is I'm gonna take my daily heave hook out. I'm gonna step here on his hip and I wanna use that to lift my hip and shoot my leg inside. Now, this is a nasty triangle set up here because as soon as I hit it like this, he doesn't have anywhere to really go. He's, he's gonna to drop to that knee most likely and unless he's like crazy flexible, like even then he's not gonna have any power to be able to deadlift me. And his hands are stuck on the floor. So he's got nothing to really effectively defend this triangle with. So let's look at this one more time here. I wanna go here, I wanna kinda of jump my setup, I wanna get a nice deep collar grip. I pull his hands, boom, over here to the floor. My foot comes out of the hip here like this. I'm gonna shoot up here nice and deep, bang like that. I'm gonna put my thigh over here toward his ear and then I'm gonna close up that triangle. It's gonna be really tight effectively. I shouldn't even have to grab the head, but um, if I have to, the sand is free after that because it was on the collar before. So that's one really good way that I can do it. So I always wanna have though, complementary opposite kind of energies. So if I can drag him to the floor, cool. Um, and I can get his hands to the floor, cool. Then I can start to look to hit the triangle or maybe an arm bar or a back take. But what if the guy is uh, standing up and he's really resisting that and I can't quite get him drugged to the floor, get him put his hands on the floor. Next thing I'm gonna look to go to from here is I'm gonna start jackknife sit up. He starts to sit up really tall up here like this. I don't wanna be super duper stretched out like this here. So if I need to transition back down to the sleeve, then I can do that. And the next thing I wanna to look to do is I'm gonna lean to a side and I wanna plant my foot here either on the floor or on his leg. And I wanna stretch my daily heave up hook deep up here and across. As I go to do that here, now when I come back down here like this, it's gonna create this broomstick kind of like thing between his legs where he has to turn his hips. If he tries to turn and face me, he's gonna fall. So he can concede this here and he can let me reveal some of his back. As we go to do that here, I'm gonna weave this one inside around his hand. I'm gonna put my shin and shoelaces behind this knee and then I'm gonna let go of this and immediately transition up to his belt or his pants. Now I'm gonna switch and grab over here on this one, pull myself behind, kick out, and now effectively I've taken his back like that. So one more time on this one, and this happens a little bit more from whenever um, he's a little bit more tall, or he's a little taller like this. So this grip here is kind of out of out of reach. So I've got my daily heave hook, I've got this pushing leg, but now I've transitioned back down and gotten a sleeve instead on this side. So as we're doing that here, I'm pushing and pulling, I'm gonna step this foot to the floor, I'm gonna reach up and across, and then I'm gonna expose a little bit of his back. Once I see his butt coming into view, I'm gonna weave this leg inside here like this, 
I let go of the sleeve, I come up and I grab the belt, I pull myself behind, kick the legs out, and I've taken his back off of that one here. Now, another um, very useful kind of thing that we can look to do off of that is to set up uh, a back take from here. That's one kind of back take that we can look at, but a little more advanced, um, not advanced, more maybe compound back take that we can look at is from here. Once I get to this position, if I start to push out like this here, I can grab either sleeve, collar, or belt, right? If I can get a hold up here of the belt, then whenever I start to reach in and across, and I can pull him here toward the floor this way, then as he falls, this leg is going across, this one's going across his belly, I'm gonna pull my head under his leg this way here, and start to take his hips over this direction. So now from here, this way, uh, since my shin is going here behind his leg, if I can reach up and grab this, then I can push, pull, and look at that, how that adjusts his hips between my legs like this. Now that makes it really accessible for me to re be able to reach up and grab, drag, and take his back off of this one. So this one can happen off of collar, belt, or sleeve. So if we look at it maybe off of the collar this time from here, Again, maybe this one, I can't get his hands to the floor. So now I'm gonna reach in, I'm gonna wedge across, I get his butt to the ground, and then I invert, go here this way. So look, how biting his leg, this one's going across his stomach, I'm gonna reach up to the other side, pull that ankle, and so I can drive my shin to the back of his knee. As I do that, since his hips are up here, this will drop his hips down lower, and now I can climb and be able to get up here and on his back a little better that way. So. These are three of my personal favorite options. And the reason that I like these so much is that it gives me a good kind of energetic response to go to. If I can get him this way, no, I can't get him that way. He's too tall. Then I can go into the second one where I take his back when he's vertical. Or if I can get him all the way leaning back or if I can get him all the way uh, compromised with that back energy and get his butt to the floor, I can roll beer and bolo and take the back off of it like that. So um, again, the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway I think for De La Hiva is to be able to play it fairly aggressively. And that doesn't mean over expenditure of energy. It doesn't mean trying to pull it fast. It doesn't mean rushing anything. It just means having something ready and in the chamber and then having backup plans that complement that energy if he shuts me down on my initial attempts. So anyway, thank you, Tariq. Appreciate it, brother. And thank you guys. I appreciate you guys watching Night Jiu Jitsu channel. Like, subscribe, share, all that kind of stuff.